Today, let's take this solid chunk of aluminum and turn it into this. So for anyone familiar with manual machining, a Turner's cube is a project you may have heard of. It's a common assignment for students, and what makes it challenging is that you first need to face down each side of a material to a perfect cube, not only the right dimensions, but also with perpendicular faces. So a lot of attention needs to be paid when you're setting up your stock for facing, as well as what order you face the sides down, and how you reference the part each time you position it, and so on. If you do all of that right, and your machine is perfectly trammed and squared, then the results should come out great. And that's what makes this a perfect challenge for the DMC1 CNC. So to make this part, I jumped on grabcad.com and searched for a Turner's Cube. This is a site where you can download free models from other users of CAD parts for engineering or art kinds of things. So I found this one from user Ashif. I can download it, import it straight into Fusion 360 and begin CAM. So the first thing you'll realize about this part is that every single side is actually the exact same thing. It has a 3D sort of tricky looking appearance, but in reality each side is just a series of holes that progressively get smaller and smaller as you go deeper down. So to start off this part, I'm facing down all the sides of the cube, but not to final height. I want to leave a little bit extra on each side since the stock isn't perfectly flat to start with. So it's never sitting flat in the vise until I face all the sides at least once. After that's done, I'm measuring the thickness of each dimension of the aluminum block and I'm noting down the side of each one of its bases. That way I can probe off the top and cut at the right depth by changing the top height in cam. I only have to do this properly once, since now we're cutting at the final heights so they should all be the same. So after I'm done squaring up the block, I can proceed to pocketing out all the circles. I'm using a quarter inch end mill and basically doing the same operation at each height. And then a bore at the final height since that one makes more sense there.
Now that I've got each side done, I want to chamfer all the top edges so the cube feels smooth to the touch and doesn't catch on anything. I'm using a chamfer toolpath and a 6mm chamfer mill to do it. And here's the final part. We went from a 265 gram cube to a 47 gram part, which is a lot of material removed. The whole thing even vibrates and rings if you tap on it, since the remaining ribs are so small. Measuring the part, it is the exact 46 millimeters that I wanted. All the surfaces are smooth to the touch, and the edges feel round and almost soft, even though they're not fillets. So as always, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something new. See you in the next one.